uh, also tonight over the weekend during a town hall in Berlin in Germany. Former President Barack Obama said he was concerned that progressives are risking going after each other in a brutal primary in what he called a, quote, circular firing squad. But the Democratic Party, well, it was not his favorite topic. According to the Washington Examiner, Obama referred to himself almost 400 times during this one speech. Here are just a few examples, but for the benefit of time, we can't give up the whole show to him referring to him. Take a look. Probably the biggest impact I could have. I was also convinced of there's only one of me. And I can, and I know, I believe I could not have been. I'm, at, I, I, I'm not here to support any political party. Uh, I've held my last political office. But I'm, I'm deeply invested. Uh, I'm assuming, uh, I always used to say, I think you can. Actually, I, I'm not sure. Am I correct about that? I had, I wanted, I wanted, a, I'd, you know, I've got to take an, and I, I was elected. I can give you a little bit of it. I've been on both sides w w when I helped. I was the first I can get, I think, uh, I'll be able to, I'd like, I'm not going to, I know from experience, that's what I'm going to do. I knew, yeah, I'd work until two, uh, I, I did not read, I think, and I, you know, even as president, uh, you know, I was, I was a pretty busy guy. Remember Toby Keith, all about me, all about I, all about number one, oh my, me, my, what I think, what I know, what I want, what I don't want to see. I like talking about you usually, every once in a while. I want to talk about me. Here was a reaction. The host of Newt's World Podcast, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, Newt Gingrich. Mr. Speaker, good to see you. I want to start with, uh, I see you smiling. I want to start with this party. I won't go through the list I gave Kevin McCarthy. You know, stack the Supreme Court, uh, uh, get rid of the Electoral College, abortion during uh, uh, labor and after labor. I mean, then the New Green Deal. You get it. Well, <clears throat> first of all, I think we should remember that the I, me, I, me president presided over the collapse of his own party. Uh, they lost more state legislative seats, governorships, control the U.S. House, control the Senate. In a sense, that's because in the end, while Barack Obama loved Barack Obama, the country sort of wanted somebody to actually deliver something. Uh, and so literally, he presided over the biggest collapse in the Democratic Party uh, in modern times. But because of the news media, of course, you'd never quite know that. Uh, I think the most revealing thing is what's happening on this whole idea of reparations. Um, and I think we should take it seriously in, in, a, in a very positive way of allowing the Democrats to explain exactly who would get reparations. How would you determine? Uh, how would far back would you go? Uh, you know, would, would uh, Elizabeth Warren be eligible for one 1,372nd part? Uh, if you think about it, you, you have to have somebody who is virtually out of touch with reality to believe that in this extraordinarily complex society, which continues to this day to get mass migration from all over the world, legal migration, by the way, uh, that you could somehow reach out magically and figure out who to give reparations to. This, this, this is a perfect Al Sharpton, utterly phony issue, but it tells you the decay of the Democratic Party, that he now has presidential candidates thrilled to go see him to tell him that they would sign a bill that's crazy. Let me ask you, you see what's happening at the border. One of the reasons I believe it's happening at this time, at this level, is because they know if they get in the country, once they're here, they're not getting thrown out. And we had a court <clears> ruling <throat> earlier tonight. But also, it's interesting, while everybody's been arguing about the border, the president's been repairing and building the wall, and they weren't able to override his veto. The Defense Department has already allocated and identified $9 billion to complete the wall. And um, I think the people coming know that this is probably their last shot. Oh, I think that's part of it. I think the other part, though, you touched on a minute ago. You know, the president ought to give a speech in which he goes through every single federal court decision that has crippled the U.S. government in dealing with immigration, and then he should announce that on behalf of fairness, we're going to open up centers next to each of those judges' personal homes, and we'll be glad to ship as many people who are here illegally as they would like. Uh, and some of those, I'm sure some of the Ninth Circuit Court judges would be thrilled to have 500 illegal immigrants in the house next to them. But this whole idea of you know, these judges who capriciously exercise their liberalism at no cost 
at no cost to them personally, no cost to them professionally. And I think that the president ought to take that head on. Last question, real quick, we're running out of time. Your concern, China, their 5G uh, expansion, we're falling behind. Uh, the Defense Innovation Board just came out and said we are losing badly. It may be the first strategic defeat in our competition with China. And if they create a Chinese Internet worldwide, we are in very deep trouble. We better also, we better figure out defenses for all the hacking that goes on against our country and our government. Apparently, we, we keep allowing this to happen. That's why Hillary's server was so bad. Mr. Speaker, great to see you. Congrats on the podcast, as always, and everything you do.